All right, let's start off here on uh, number one. So for this one, we are going to find the degree measure. So we're converting this to degrees and our conversion rate is always uh, 180 to pi. So if we're going two degrees, we're gonna multiply by 180 over pi. Um, and you can see usually on these ones, the pi's will cancel out and then we'll cross cancel over this way as well. So this is gonna turn into a 60. So then I just have 60 times two, which is 120 um, over one. So that's just 120 degrees. All right, question two and, and three are very similar here. So I'm just gonna do number three. Um, so once again here, we're just gonna multiply by 180 over pi. We'll cancel out the pi's here and then partially cancel here will give us 90. And so we're doing negative three times 90 and that is negative 270 degrees. And it is very important here that we list that as a negative um, because if the radian measurement was negative, that means the degree measurement will still be negative. And next up here, number four, it's saying to find the degree measurement again. So we're converting this to degrees. So we are going to multiply again by uh, 180 over pi. Now, um, I know that there's no pi on this one. Not all radian measurements have pi. Uh, and so in this case, um, we don't assume it's six pi. It is actually just six. And on this one, it says round answer to one decimal place. So this is one where I would say we need to use a calculator. Uh, most of this section is no calculator, but this one's going to require it. So I'm just going to do 6 times 180 divided by pi on my calculator, and that's going to give me uh, 343.7747. Uh, and it says one decimal place, though, so I would put it as 343.8. I'm just following the proper rounding there. All right, number five, some more conversion, so I'll let you guys handle that. But um, we are going to now move on to this topic, which is coterminal angles. And coterminal angles is always, I think of it just taking a trip around the circle. And so if we're talking degrees, we can add or subtract 360 degrees. If we're talking radians, we can add or subtract 2 pi radians, since both of those represent uh, a whole circle. So this one wants two positive and two co negative coterminal angles. So for the positive ones, um, I'm just going to add 360. And so that's going to give me uh, 710. And so that's uh, my first one. But I can add 360 again to get another coterminal angle. You can really do this as many times as you want. So I'd say 1070 is the next positive one. Uh, and then for the uh, negative ones, we are going to instead subtract 360. So then this first one's going to be negative 10 degrees. And then um, if I subtract 360 again, that's adding two negatives. So that'll be a bigger negative here, negative 370. All right, next up here, we're doing coterminal angles again, uh, but now we're doing it with radians. So this time I'm going to add or subtract 2 pi. However, whenever I have a fraction here, which radians usually are, I just kind of convert that to a common denominator here. So since we're looking for a 4 on bottom, I'm just going to say that's 8 pi over 4 that we're going to be adding or subtracting. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, 8 pi over 4, and so that's going to give me 11 pi over 4. Now it again wants two positive and two negative coterminal angles, so I'm going to add 8 pi over 4 again. So this is one answer, and then my next positive answer is 19 pi over 4. So those are my two positive ones. And then I'm going to get my negative ones by subtracting here. So I'm going to subtract 8 pi over 4, and I'll give me negative 5 pi over 4. So that's 1, and then I'm going to subtract 8 pi over 4 again, and that'll give me negative 13 pi over 4. So there's my four answers. All right, next up here, um, this one is saying the measure of an angle in, all right, blah, 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 blah. All right, again, coterminal angles. Now, this one is starting off at a negative angle. Um, no real difference there. I'm still going to be adding and subtracting 2 pi. And so if my denominator is 4, it's going to be 8 pi over 4. And so I'm going to add 8 pi over 4, and that's going to give me a positive 7 pi over 4 for my first answer. Add it again, and we get a 15 pi over 4 for my second answer. And then I'm going to uh, take the negative pi over 4 and subtract 8 pi over 4. And that gives me negative 9 pi over 4. And then I'm going to subtract it again. And that's going to give me negative 17 pi over 4. All right, next up, it's asking me if these angles are coterminal. And so how I would check this is kind of just see, take the smaller one and see if I add the, my, uh, my 2 pi um, that it gives me the second one. Um, now, of course, we need a common denominator here, so instead of 2 pi, I'm actually going to do, uh, let's see, we're going over 6 here, so that's going to be 12 pi over 6. And if I add the 12 pi over 6, I get 19 pi over 6, which is uh, exactly what they uh, have there, and so I would say, yes, these are coterminal angles. 
All right, same idea here, except now we're talking degrees. So we're going to add or subtract 360 to check if these are coterminal in degrees. Um, so if I take 115 and I add 360, um, that's going to give me 475. Uh, and so that's not 835, but remember I can do this multiple times. So I see 475 is pretty small here. So I'm going to add 360 again. And what do I get the second time? Um, well, that's going to be 835. So actually, if I add it twice, these are coterminal angles. It took me two trips around the circle to get there, but that's actually okay. Um, you can really take as many trips as you want and, and still have them be coterminal angles. All right, next up, we're trying to find an arc length here. Um, so arc length is just a part of the circumference. So what I always remember about the arc length is the arc length equals uh, 2 pi r, which is the whole circumference, and then just times whatever fraction of the circle you're talking about. So um, if we have the kind of included angle in here, which we do, um, if that's in degrees, we're going to go, this fraction is going to be out of 360. But if it's in radians, it's going to be out of 2 pi, since that's kind of representing the uh, whole circle. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to put 5 pi over 6 up here. Now, on this formula, um, I think it's always just easiest to put this kind of left side over 1 and then immediately cancel out these two pi's right there. So really what we're saying here is that s is going to equal r times 5 pi over 6. Now, I actually do know what the radius is here. It's 8, and so I'm going to plug that in right now. So I'm going to call this 8 over 1 times 5 pi over 6. Um, I'll do a little cross-canceling here. Um, partial, and that's going to turn into a 3, and that'll be a 4, and so I would say this one is 20 pi over 3. All right, so again here, we're looking for the uh, the arc length, um, and they're telling me r is 9, and they tell me this over here is 124 degrees. However, I noticed that they want the, the arc length over here, and so I the first thing I would do is I would subtract that from 360 to kind of see the other side of the circle. So that's going to be a uh, Oh, no, I didn't need to do that. So it'll be 236. All right, cool. So we're looking at 236 degrees. And so the arc length here is, like I said, the circumference, 2 pi r, and then times whatever fraction of the circle you're talking about. Now, in this case, since we're doing degrees, we're going to do it out of a total of 360 as opposed to the last one. Um, in, in radians, it was out of a total of... Um, a total of 2 pi. Okay, so... Um, what are we going to do? You know what I would do? I would first, um, or we know the radius is r, so I should have, or sorry, the radius is 9, so I should have put that in right there. And then um, I am actually going to multiply this together. So we have 18 pi times 236 over 360. And I did that because I see that these will kind of easily reduce here. Um, eight, uh, 360 divided by 18 um, that's 20. All right. And so now I can just reduce 236 with 20. I know that they're both even, so I'm going to start off there by dividing them by 2. So 236 divided by 2 is going to give me, um, 16, and then that will be an 8. All right. So if I reduce this by 2, that's going to turn into 118 over 10 times pi. But they're still both even, so I would divide that by 2 again. And so that's going to give me a 5 minus 10 is 18 and 9. So uh, it's going to turn into a 59, and that'll turn into a 5. And so I'm going to call this 59 pi over 5. All right, next up here, we're trying to find the central angle theta. It says it's in radians here. And so it looks like they have given me the arc length. And so um, I'm going to use that S equals... Um, and it's 2 pi r for the, uh, the circumference, and then we just multiply that by whatever angle we're looking at over. And in this case, we're going to use 2 pi because it said to just use radians there, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and so first of all, um, what you can do on this formula is like cancel out those 2 pi, so s just equals r theta. Um, and then I'm going to plug in everything I know. So I know that 8 is s, I, I know that r is 3, and I don't know what theta is. And so I'm going to say that theta equals 8 over 3. Um, now, that is not 8 pi over 3. That is just 8 over 3. Uh, even though this is in radians, remember, radians don't have to have pi. I know they usually do, but not always. All right, next up, we got number 15 here. It says, find the length 
S of an arc, the subtends is uh, blah blah, central angle of 30 degrees and radius of 16. So uh, this is just our arc length formula. So uh, S equals arc length is like circumference. So it's 2 pi r times whatever, uh, whatever we're talking about here, whatever fraction. Now in this case, um, it's talking about degrees. So I'm going to put it out of 360. Uh, so I'm just going to plug in everything I know here. It looks like we're looking for S. And so our radius is 16. And, uh, and our th we got 30 over 360 here. And so I'll go ahead and reduce this. 30 over 360 looks like it reduces to 1 out of 12. And I can make this one, um, I can turn it into, um, let's see, what is that? 32 if I want, 32 pi. And so now I can cross cancel some more. Um, I think both of those will divide by 4. So this one will turn into 3. And that one will turn into 8. So it sounds like 8 pi over 3 um, meters. However, oh, it says round your answer to two decimal places. And so that means I need to type this one in the calculator. Um, so we'll go 8 pi over 3. And that is going to give me about uh, 8.38 if I round it to two decimal places. All right, next up it says central angle theta. It is in a circle. A radius that and the arc length is that so find the theta in degrees and radians okay so um you know what i would do on this one um is since we can uh since it's asking for both i would actually start with the radians since my radian formula is a little bit easier i got 2 pi r times theta over 2 pi um, and remember this is the one where the two pi's cancel out and so I can just say S equals R theta. And so I know then the arc length is 9, and then the uh, radius is 8. So I can just figure out what theta is right now. Um, and it says round to two decimal places. So this is, again, a calculator question. So I'm going to say theta equals 9 over 8, um, which is 1.125, which I will call 1.13. Um, all right, and so next up, instead of doing this all over again, I would just take that 1.13 and convert it to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. Um, and so, again, that's a calculator here. Um, so 180 times 1.13 divided by pi, and that's going to give me uh, 64 point, and again, rounding to two decimal places, um, 74. degrees. All right, next up here, we got another arc length. Uh, it looks like it's giving me radians here and the arc length. So uh, I'll use my radian formula, which is uh, once we simplify it, just r theta, like we've been doing on the previous problem. So I'm just going to plug in 28 right here. I don't know what r is, but I know that our radians are going to be a uh, 7 pi over 9. And so to, um, to get rid of this here, uh, I am going to multiply by 9 over 7 pi to get rid of that. And i got to do that, obviously, on both sides. Um, that will cancel out over here and give me r equals. Um, and then uh, i got 9 times 28. Or actually, I can cross-cancel that. That would be better. And so this is a 4. Um, so that will be 36 over pi. Now, again, here it asks for two decimal places. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type this into the calculator. Um, so 36 divided by pi is 11.46 is R. All right, next up here, uh, we're looking for the area of a circular sector. So now we're switching over to the area formula. So area is uh, pi R squared. And then we're going to multiply it by that same fraction here which it depends on what we're using. So we have a, a good example of both here. Um, and so this one is going to be out of, in radians, so that's out of 2 pi. And then this one is going to be out of degrees, so that's going to be out of 360. So same idea as arc length, except we use the area formula rather than the circumference formula. OK, so let's uh, get to it here. So uh, on this one, it is 70 out of 360. And we know our radius is 2, so I'll go ahead and replace that. And so the area here is going to be 4 pi times, and I'm just going to reduce that to 7 over 36. Uh, next up, I know that um, this reduces to 9 there. And so I'm just going to say that this one is 7 pi over 9. It, says, it doesn't say to round here, so I would say you should write your answer just like that. Um, and then next up here, this one says point, uh, that this is 16. 
squared, and then this is 0.5. Now, actually, instead of 0.5, I would call this one half. I just like working with the fractions better. And so um, I would simplify, um, would I? Actually, I wouldn't. Hold on, let me backtrack there. I, I can, you can simplify inside that fraction first. I actually see here, um, I would do the 16 squared. Um, and so that is 16 times 16. Um, oh, that's not a 4, that's a 6. 6 and 36. Uh, and so that's 9. And then this will be uh, 256. Okay, cool. So we have area equals uh, 256 pi times 1 half over 2 pi. And so I see here that the um, pi's do cancel out. And then 256 will divide by 2, so I can cancel that out as well. 256 divided by 2, 1, and then 2, 4. Oh, no, 8. 1, 2, 8. Okay, so now I have uh, area equals 128 times 1 half. Uh, because the pi is canceled out, that's gone. And so I can actually divide by 2 again here. And that's actually going to be a lot easier. That'll just be 60, uh, 64 for this one. Um, not 64 pi on that one. Like I said, the pi's did cancel out. All right, next up here, it says we've got the area of a circle, a central angle of 125, um, and then find the area if it's uh, one if it's 3 feet. So area would be pi r squared. And then again, we're going to multiply this by the fraction of the circle we're looking at. And it's given in degrees, so I'm going to put it 125 out of 360. And I know then that the uh, radius is 3. And on this one, it's saying round your answer to one decimal place, which is telling me that this is a calculator question. And so I'm not going to worry about simplifying on this one. Um, I'm just going to type it all in my calculator. So 9 times pi times 125 divided by 360. So for me, that's going to come out to uh, 9.8 square feet. All right, next up here, um, it says the area of a whole circle is 500 meters squared. So that's the whole circle. Um, and then find the area of the sector that subtends the central angle of two radians. Now, we could use this area to backtrack and find the, um, find the radius, but there's actually a lot easier way to do this, which is um, if you just kind of remember here that area for the sector is pi r squared, and then if we're talking radians, that's going to be theta over 2 pi. Well, we kind of actually already have this as the 500. So I'm actually going to plug in the 500 right there for the whole circle, and we're just going to multiply this by 2 over 2 pi to see what's the area of this smaller piece of the circle. Um, I see that these cancel out right there, and so actually all I can do is, is um, do in my calculator here, and again I would say since the wording there is saying um, the one decimal place, it's a calculator question, so it's 500 divided by pi. And so for me, that comes out to 159.2. All right, next up here, uh, it says car wheels are 36 inches in diameter. Now, I never like working with the diameter, so I would, I would interpret that as the radius being 18. So it says, how far in miles will the um, car travel if it revolves 10,000 times without slipping? Now, uh, okay, so what this is really asking us about here is circumference. If you think about the wheel on a car, um, at, you know, if it, if it turns around 10,000 times, that means like all of this uh, hits the ground 10,000 times. And so that is representing the circumference. So I'm going to start off with my circumference formula, which is obviously 2 pi r. And then um, usually we're multiplying this by a fraction because it's hitting um, less, it's, or sorry, it's going around the circle less than one full rotation. But in this case, it's actually going more than one full rotation. It's going 10,000 full rotation. So I'm going to actually multiply my circumference by 10,000. So uh, this one is definitely a calculator question. Um, and so um, we're going to multiply that in the calculator. And so it's 2 times pi times 18 times 10,000. And so that is uh, 113097. 3.355. 
Okay, however, the problem here is that this is in inches and it asked us to go to miles. And so I need to actually convert this into feet and then convert it into miles. So to convert it into feet, um, I always kind of make a little T table here. Um, and then so we will, uh, let's see, we know that one foot is 12 inches. So that means I need to divide by 12 here. So I'm gonna take my previous answer and divide by 12. So I get that that's nine, four, um, two, four, seven point seven seven nine feet. And then I'm gonna make another T table because I know one mile, I, oh, I don't wanna mess this up. I think it's 5280, let me look it up. Um, feet in a mile, okay. 5280, yeah, so 5280 feet. And so that means I need to divide that by 5280. And that gives me a uh, 17.85 um, if I round it to the nearest two decimal places. All right, next up here, uh, we are talking about the difference between Buffalo and Raleigh. Um, so it gives you their two latitudes. And so what that really tells me is that I would wanna find the, dis the difference between their latitudes because that would be the angle in between them. And so I'm gonna subtract those two. So 42.9 minus, 35.8. Can I do that without a calculator? I, I can do that part. It would be 7.1 degrees, okay? So that's the, that's the uh, angle right there in between the two. And then they tell me that the radius of the Earth is 3960. Um, so I can set up a, uh, my arc length formula here. Um, S equals, because that is the arc length, is like uh, you know, a, a straight line distance around the edge of a circle there. Um, and so I'm gonna say that that is uh, two pi r times uh, 7.1 over 360. All right, so let's type this in the calculator. And so I get for me that the distance between these two cities, and it says round to the nearest mile, so then I would say that that's uh, 491 miles. All right, uh, next up here, we're trying to find the, the distance that the uh, Earth travels around the sun um, in three days for me. Okay, so this, again, would be an arc length here. So I'm going to say S equals, and then we're going to do 2 pi R, and they say that um, this is 93 million miles for R. Now, it says that they put the answer in millions of miles anyway, so I'm just going to put 93 there. Um, because it's kind of implied that that's talking about millions. And then we need to multiply by whatever fraction of the circle that we're talking about. Now, um, we don't have a radian or degree measurement here, but it does say that we're assuming it's 365 days out of the total year. So that's, that is kind of the whole circle, and we're only doing three out of those days. So it's not really our angle out of 360 or 3 pi. It's, kind of, it's doing just the part out of the whole, which is really the big idea of what we're doing on these problems anyway. So I'm just going to type that in the calculator. So 2 pi times 93 times 3 over 365. And that is going to give me about 4.8 million miles. All right, next up, we have a, a really famous uh, math problem here with the, the Greek mathematician Era, Eratosthenes. That sounds good. Um, and this actually did happen. He measured the sun's rays and saw that there was a 7.2 degree difference. Um, and he had someone walk, literally walk along this arc length right here and saw that it was 500 miles. So we know that the arc length we're looking at is 500 miles. We know the angle we're looking at is 7.2 degrees, but he didn't know this, the, uh, the radius of the Earth. And so way back at this time, he actually calculated the radius of the Earth using the same formula we're using today. And so um, what we would do then is we would say um, that... 500 equals 2 pi r, and we don't know what r is, but we do know that we're doing 7.2 over 360 since we're talking about degrees here. So now all we have to do is, is solve this for r. So um, I would first multiply by 360 over 7.2. And Aris, Aristothenes had to do this by hand, but let's go ahead and use a calculator on this one. So 500 times 360 um, and then divided by 7.2. So that's gonna give me 25,000 equals uh, two pi r. And so now I'm gonna divide this by two pi. 
Now, very important on the calculator when you divide by 2 pi, I have to put that in parentheses here. Otherwise, it's going to divide by 2 and then multiply by pi. So I'm going to divide by parentheses 2 pi. you got to do this anytime you know, you're dividing by two things that are multiplying. And so uh, let's see, to the nearest 10 miles, it says, I'm going to call this 3980. Now it says to find the circumference, use that to find the circumference of the whole Earth. And, um, and so I think they're wanting me to use this number that I found here, even though it is rounded, but that's fine. Uh, so we're just going to say, actually, this is not s anymore its circumference equals 2 pi times 3980 and if i multi uh oh actually you know what that was it's actually the same answer back here because that was what happened before i divided by 2 pi so i don't actually have to calculate that i'm just gonna plug in my my answer right there all right next up here uh this one is saying that we uh let's see uh we have a sprinkler pipe that goes around, um, but it only goes around 260 degrees, and then find the area irrigated by this water system. Okay, so we're just gonna use our area formula here. It's pi r squared, and then since we're not doing the whole circle, we just put like the part over the hole that we are doing. And so they tell me the radius here is 300, and it's saying round your answer to the nearest whole number, so uh, I am just gonna, I'm not gonna worry about canceling here. I'll, I might cancel out those zeros if you want, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to type it in the calculator. So pi times 300 squared times 26 divided by 36. And that is going to give me, let's see, to the nearest whole number, 204204. Um, and that's the, the square feet that it is covering. So it's not going into the rocks. That's just all the grass.